Health-wise, there was a time where you were trying to be a bodybuilder, or is that, uh, is that wrong? Well, I wasn't trying to be a bodybuilder. I was getting into bodybuilding sort of backdoor, and I just ended up participating in some of these, uh, quite a few of these uh, bodybuilding competitions as a vehicle because my boy, my two teenage boys were involved, and I tried, and it gave us something to do together. It was kind of a goal-oriented kind of enterprise, you know, so we would work out for months and do our training and our dieting, and we had something to train for. Well, that was kind of the point of it, give them something healthy to do rather than something less healthy to do. Even though, in the end, bodybuilding, the things that were required of and what I got into with bodybuilding ended up being worse for my health than anything I've ever done in rock and roll. Like some of the supplement stuff or that kind of thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You didn't do steroids, though, did you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Nobody nobody gets looking like that without naturally, you know, just being naturally aspirated. Um, and it's very, very common. And you really can't compete without feeling it. It's really very, a very disingenuous kind of call of sport quotes, you know, I, it's really a it's really a drug contest, and that's why it, it, it kind of miffs me every time I see any kind of documentary or, or any kind of article or something about bodybuilders. And the first thing I look for, well, where are they are they talking about the elephant in the room? No, very rarely. A lot of times, those guys are like broken too. I was talking to somebody the other day where I was like, yeah, the Rock seems to be in good shape. I mean, he still works out all the time, and I don't see that. But a lot of the bodybuilder guys, I saw a documentary recently where they're just, like, broken. They can't even move later in life. Yep. Is that well, due to the steroids, or is that due to just working out like that? No, because what happens when, first of all, there's, there's all kinds of levels of steroids. The football, go to the beach and bars kind of level of doing a little of this and that just to kind of get an advantage and look good for the girls and impress their friends, and beef up for football and that kind of stuff. Then there's the next level, which is like staying on these cycles for extended periods of time, doing multiple cycles and stacking stuff. Stacking means adding different steroids on top of each other to get complementary effects, compound effects. Wow. And then there's, then you go to another level, which is you add in the growth and growth is a whole other level. Anytime you see any of these pro guys, they're taking growth as well. Growth is a completely different animal. It'll get you into freak zone. And it'll strip away fat, and you'll put on muscle like crazy. Of course, you still work out and still diet. But you can't get these freak bodies or even these sort of like admirable-looking physiques without doing some kind of cheating. And you pay the price for all cheating. And that's what I found in my life is looking at other guys that I, that I went through this with and what's happened to them. And as you said, looking at and see what's happened to a lot of these pro guys later in life, there's no free lunch. What were some of the consequences? Oh, go ahead. Finish your thought. Yeah, there was no, there's just no free ride. You're going to get some great advantages. You're going to feel great. You're going to look great. It's going to be awesome. And then you're going to pay for it. You know, it's a Faustian bargain with the devil. <laughs> How far did you go into it? Uh, I never went into growth or anything like or insulin or IGF-1 or anything like that, pro-level stuff. But I, I did some ser serious cycles. I'd say I was sort of in the middle bracket for a while for a good number of years um and uh what that can do to you is that you, you can end up having cardiovascular and heart problems develop uh definitely joint problems and all kinds of you know but see what you're doing is you're building more muscle fiber than your tendons and your joints can naturally deal with because of your body the design of your particular body you're, we all have a homeostasis point where we want our the set point our bodies want to be at, ideally, just naturally, cellular level. And you keep tricking that to get an advantage, you're going to pay for it some other way. There's always a weak link there, and that weak link will pay. A lot of different things that you can develop because of that uh, later in life. Do you have joint pain, or do you have any heart issues or anything like that? Yeah, both. Yeah. Really? Uh, I manage everything pretty well because I... Uh, I do a, I'm not saying I'm a purist, but I do a pretty close to, a, I try to most of the time do a, a whole food, organic plant-based diet, which has been proven to reverse uh, heart disease. And I do low inflammation eating so that I can reduce the pain to inflammation in my joints. And I've successfully addressed that issue to a very large part just by doing that and continuing to work out. I do a lot of body weight exercises now. I do more cardio and low impact stuff. And, and I still keep... Uh, I still do not heavy weights, but I still do weight training, but not anything that's damaging. But I still want to put stress on 
on my muscles and I want them to at least not atrophy as I get older. So try to diminish the atrophying of the muscles, which is just normal as you get older. <clears throat> so yeah, there's all these things that I, common sense things that I do now to kind of maintain. The anti-inflammatory kind of way that you're talking about, I'm constantly trying to improve it. What's a typical day look like for you on the on the menu? Uh, well, coffee's a good thing. So, uh, and, and also green tea is really important. So I, I drink a lot of green tea, organic green tea. I don't do any. I try to really just stay away from sugars uh, as much as possible, unless it's in the form of fruit or something it's in a natural form that's part of the food. So then the fiber slows down that, that insulin response. Sodium, I stay away from that as well. Never add salt to my food and I try not to buy anything that has salt added to it. Really try to stay away from any kind of processed food, anything deep fried. Uh, don't really do dairy, no ice cream. Occasionally I screw it up. You got to live, you got to enjoy life, but 90% of the time. And no alcohol? I do drink, yeah, but I, it's, well, I average about a drink a day. Again, everything's in moderation. 